the power of we was a way of inclusion, a way of inviting anyone who needed or wanted a place to belong. It was just very clear to me that this was something that would really benefit the young folks right here. And to be able to give them a different perspective that I know where they come from, I know what they're experiencing because I was there too, and uh, letting them know that there's different actions that they can take that'll lead to a different destiny. We really needed to hear that. In order to change our community, we needed to hear that. And they are inspired to invest in making it happen. That's powerful. Hello, hello, hello. I have a question for you. Have you ever felt completely lost? You know, seeking purposeful direction that could and should propel your mission within your divine journey to that next level, but still it hasn't happened. Well, my name is Lauren Michaels Harris and I'm the founder of P3, the journey series. People come to me because they're wounded, many are scared, and even there are those who are bruised simply because they feel that they are increasingly, for whatever reason, losing their ability to dream. Now, this P3 program is not for a person who's just looking to start a business, no, but rather for those of you out there who have been on your journey and you've been navigating within your divine purpose, but you still desire to elevate to that level that you have not reached yet. If this is appealing, if this describes you, then I wanna have a chat with you. I want to hear your story. So use the link below to get registered for your free seat at P3, the journey series, and let's get started one story at a time. I'll see you inside. Click the link. Sorry, I was eating some chips. Don't want to come on here with something in my teeth. And I want to make sure I come on here with my teeth in. I'm kidding. I don't have false teeth. Who believed that? Speak up. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Welcome to today's installment of bathrobe moments. That's the bell. That's right. The bell of purpose. Going to ring it. Every time there's some truth, and we got a lot of truth today because we got a lot of voices today. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know what it is. The experts are back. Now, Dominique, the Oracle, um, is busy doing other things. She's taking her boyfriend to the airport. So we have a stand-in. Mm -hmm. Dano from Weekly Dose of Dano's here. So that's cool. We've got Jamie Lane backstage. Um, you don't even know what she's want to know what she's doing back there. And then we have mindset coach, the happiness guru himself, Tim Chung. He's here. And Tracy, the reset Randolph. She's here. So, and you're here. So now we're ready. It's perfect. Listen, today's uh, experts uh, day, 
I was going to just let everybody do their thing, but nope. I'm a control freak. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Am I? Put in the comments. Am I a control freak? Tell me the truth. Brian's always trying to act like I am. Hurry up with my eggs. Anyway, I'm kidding. That would never work. First of all, Brian can only cook salad and water. You figure it out. Okay. So, anyway, today, you know, moving forward, you guys, April 28th, all things, all things Power of We Symposium. Oh, my goodness, especially after, oh, you guys, Brandon, you know, yesterday I was telling you about Brandon and um, Brandon went home um, to um, what is next? Um, yesterday afternoon, I think it was right around one o'clock. So um, prayers to uh, Glenn and Jennifer Smith, Brandon's parents, and um, just think, keep them in your prayers and not just them. You know, we got a war. Think about that. I thought about that last night. It's like they have one child and and look how it's just tearing me apart. And then, you know, you think about what's going on over in um, the war and all because it's beyond just the one spot. Now it's all over the place and it's affecting us here. So we want to pray. We want to pray. This is, these are hard times, you guys. Now more than ever, we need to make sure that whatever it is we were challenged to bring to this world, to impact this world and change this world, to heal this world. It's time to dust it off. Bring it out of storage. Get it out there. The world needs everything you've lived, all your stories, and a bag of chips. That's just how it goes. So I thought today I'd start. Well, I'm going to bring in the experts here in just a moment. But I wanted to do a little focus because I was doing the math. last night. I had a conversation with some of my friends who are in the foster care world of change in, in um, uh, Washington, D.C. And they were giving me some late, some of the latest stats. And did you know that currently, right now, there are more than 442,000 children within the United States foster care system? Um, and that number, that 42, shows up again. Not just 442,000 kids, but here's the, here's the sad, sad part. There's a lot, but here's one. Um, Children in foster care are 42% more likely to die before they turn the age of 18 uh, than any other sector of the, the young person population. And so I, I bring that attention because, you know, we have kids at the we that are in foster care. We have kids there that have been in foster care. And unfortunately, statistics dictate that we have kids at the we that are headed for foster care. They just don't know it yet. So I thought we'd start as I bring in, um, while this is playing, I'm going to bring in our our experts. But I wanted to, I found something that really resonated with me, having been in foster care for five, almost six years. Um, what it sounds like from the eyes of a child who has lived it. So let's just take a look and we'll get our experts in. Being taken from place to place and, and being sent to a whole new different city and a whole new different family and people that you've never met before. It's a really confusing experience. You just feel torn away from your community. It's like just imagine that you are going to work one day and it's just a normal day and you're on your way to work and everything is as it's supposed to be and you watered your dog and you drank your coffee and you tell your kids goodbye and you go to work and then the police show up at your job and they say, okay, we're moving you to a totally different city and you don't know anybody and you, you can't call your family and you can't call any of your friends and you need to leave your phone here and you can't take any of your stuff with you. We're going to, we'll figure that out later. And they just pick you up and they transport you to a totally different place and then tell to just wait in this room for a little while because we're going to figure things out and then they come and bring you a little sack lunch in and then it's oh just a few more hours and we're going to figure this out just here play with this this little toy okay put this little ring on a hook and then they send you to these these really well-meaning people who but you have no idea who they are and their house smells different and maybe they have a dog and they have hardwood floors you've only ever had carpet like everything about the experience is alien to you and all you want is to be able to contact the people that you have a bond with it's a very disrupting experience and in a lot of ways it's a traumatic experience because all of these things are unexpected and suddenly everything in your world that you felt was safe and secure and concrete is not. And having those ideas shattered is really difficult, especially as a child, because you need that security. You need to know that 
here's my bed, I can come home to it, and this is where it's gonna be, and that's gonna be okay. Or here's my mom, and no matter what, she's gonna be there for me, and I can just call her and she'll show up, and that's gonna be okay. When you can't believe that anymore, it starts to make you question, well, what can you believe? Who can you trust? What is a for sure thing? You begin to stop valuing certain things. You stop valuing relationships because they're not concrete and they're not gonna be there forever. And you stop investing yourself in certain things. And all of a sudden stability isn't really important to you. Having goals isn't important to you. You are concerned with where are you gonna sleep tonight? Are you gonna be safe? Who are these people? Doing a simple thing like taking a shower in a stranger's home is a very disconcerting experience. Okay. Um, I wanted to just kick things off, man. That was a bit triggering for me simply because just two days ago, you know, I'll be 60 this year on the 4th of July. And so the Social Security Administration sent me a big old package, big envelope. I don't know what in the world. So I opened it up. They're like, you're two years away from where you can, you can um, retire. And then they had a breakdown of how much you're going to get. And I'm looking at it. And instantly I thought about all, I saw all of the missing decades just by looking at the social security thing. And so that's kind of what led me to bringing um, that in first today um, because kids today, you don't have to be in foster care to have the, the scars that match someone who has mm -hmm. been in foster care. So anyway, um, welcome, welcome. We're gonna get started today. I wanted to kind of talk about, we're gonna, we're gonna take some, this is gonna be kind of different. We're gonna spend half the time talking about um, who you all, and that includes you all at home, um, that one person. So start thinking right now, reach back down the hall of your journey and um, knock on the door of that person who made a difference, an impact. Um, could have just been a word, a smile, a side glance, a card, a hug conversation, a home, a bed, $5 for food, just an ear. It could have been any and all of those things and more. But who was it? Because we all have them. So I want you to go back down there, knock on that door and bring that story out just a little bit. We'd like to find out who is that person that comes to mind when you think, man, I wouldn't be who I am today, nor would I be where I am today if it weren't for fill in the blank. So Say hello. Good morning to um, all of the experts. We have a substitute today. We'll start with him and um, Dano of Weekly Dose. Welcome uh, to the show. Did y'all hear somebody screaming? Yeah. That's my boo having fun. Oh, oh. <laughs> Hi, Brandon. Hi, boo. <laughs> Hi, beard. That's, uh, that's life at Jamie Lane's. Okay, <laughs> Dano, how are you doing? How are things in Philly? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Where are you? Yeah, Camden, right outside of Philly. I can walk to the bridge. That's so fancy. Oh, well, what can I say? Um, yeah, life has been absolutely amazing. Life has been beautiful. Everything is on an up and up. I know April 28th, I'm super excited to be, you know, with Tracy Randolph on the co-hosting main stage MC. And, you know, everything's been great. You know, I, I firmly believe that everything that you think about uh, manifests in your life. So if you're thinking about great things, great things will happen. And that's just how I've been taking my days. Did you, did you get up? Were you rushed in this morning? Uh, no. Well, yes, I was. Eat? Yeah, I, I, I didn't did shave. Chocolate milk on you. What's that on your, on no, your I was at the gym this morning. What? I to shave. I was at the gym this morning. I forgot to shave. Looking good, right? You need about three or four more feet yeah. on there oh, to be yeah. considered a beard. Her boyfriend's name is Beard. So, <laughs> of course, he likes beards. So, um, I'm kidding. Daniel, thank you for being here today. So are you it's good to see you, Dan. She's going to make me mute, huh? Oh, <laughs> I want to see how far I can push now. She just found out, didn't she? Uh, don't get don't get put backstage. I'm just playing. You're back. So, Daniel, are you thinking about that person? Uh, you know, I, the, the I, not yet, but think about it. All right, you got it. Reset Tracy Randolph. Good morning. How are you and where are you in the world today? Good morning. I am in Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte. North Kakalaki. Hush, <laughs> hush, sweet Charlotte. <laughs> I'm sorry. I sound like Louise Jefferson, but <laughs> and on the phones, we still got a lot of money to raise uh, in two weeks, but I know we'll do it. We always do. Tracy, yeah. have you thought about that person? 
I have. It's hard to pick one person, though. I'll be I honest know, with you. But somebody has to be at the front of the line mm -hmm. today. It could be you could have three or four, but the one that comes to mind today, knock on that door, wake them up. Let's bring that story out. Tim Chung, Mindset Coach, Happiness Guru. Welcome. How are you? How's it been, man? Where are you? Doing great. I'm I'm back in Illinois, or I guess I was in Illinois before, too, but I'm back around the Chicagoland area today. So I'm here right now and um doing... You are? Yeah, <laughs> I am. I have no idea. Just... Okay. Just for just for just for a little bit, but um, how I'm many hours did you work last week? Right? How many hours did you work last week, Tim? Uh, sixty hours. Sixty. That's he reduced yeah. it a couple months From ago. Hundred. Okay, good to see <laughs> no, you're back. Your no, word. No. And then we have, and it's bad, <laughs> bad, badass Jamie, badass Jamie Lane. How are you? I'm excellent as always. Who are you Thank in the world? You. I'm in Florida, near Hudson, Florida. So you got like lots of sunshine and 80 and degree weather and stuff? Oh, yeah. All yeah, right. perfect, perfect for no tan lines. Okay, here's what's perfect. Bye-bye. So anyway, um, um, <laughs> I'm kidding. It's 72 in Chicago today, or so they claim. We'll see. Wow. It might snow. You never know here. So listen, I'm glad you're all here. So let's um, let's talk about that person um, who, who did it. And I'll tell you the one who people would think, I bet he's going to say his birth mother, Lucille. Um, but actually, no, because I would have never had the courage to look for her if it wasn't for my friend DJ. I remember I was out of the Air Force, maybe six months, still living in Phoenix. And um, I had my record deal then. So all I had to do was sit in the apartment and write songs all day and go lay at the pool. And DJ, she, a uh, she, she was um, um, writing. She was a, what do you call those people that write the music for orchestras? A composer. Oh. She was a, a composer and she was working with the Phoenix Orchestra. And so she was just there on assignment, you know, like for nine months while they were putting, it was something about the planets she was doing. Anyway, um, and we were in the jacuzzi. And we were talking about family and I made some kind of mention that oh, I don't have one or da, 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 da. And she was like, and I was talking, whatever I was talking about, either my adoptive family or how they didn't want me to find the other. Anyway, she just looked at me and she goes, Lauren, you don't know. And I was like, no, what? And she goes, you really don't know. I was like, well, no, what? And she goes, you don't know. You don't realize that you get to pick who your family is. Don't you know that family is based in love. It's those relatives you're talking about. That's what's based in blood. I had never heard that. And suddenly my narrative switched and it's uh, uh, never gone back to the way it was before. So I've never been, let's put it this way. I have never been completely alone since that moment. So that's who came to mind for me. Let's start with Tim and work our way to Jamie, then Tracy, bringing up the rear Tano. So go ahead, Tim, who's that person for you? Yeah, the first person that came to mind um, today was uh, uh, one of my mentors, one of my first few mentors. Um, his name is Ben Scumper. It was in a sales office back when I had my emo hair and the lip ring. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And I had so much social anxiety. I couldn't even order um, uh, a burger at a fast food restaurant uh, or even go through a drive through. It was, it was pretty rough. And uh, it's funny because I get hired at a sales job. And they honestly hired anybody that just will, was willing to show up. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> yeah. But sitting there, um, I always knew there was something within me that um, was sleeping. And uh, I felt pretty, uh, like... I love it when I feel pretty. Different. <laughs> Not <in> that way. <laughs> oh, you but, uh, yeah, he, yeah, he 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 uh, definitely took me to the side, and he was very like um, well respected. Everyone looked up to him. Tried to like fight for his time, yet he kind of pulled me to the side one on one for like a whole like evening, and just sat down, st stared me right directly in my eyes, and like uh, almost de demanded no BS. Just clearly saw me as a person and saw like what do you really want to do in this life? What's your legacy? Like, what are you stopping yourself from doing? What are all these things that are like getting your way? And he 
spent like the whole evening just writing out everything that I wanted to do, everything that was possible for myself. And um, yeah, it was life changing. Life changing. Yep. You say, I agree. I understand. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Tim. Jamie. Um, the one person for me, I guess, you know, at 18, I, I was counting down the years to leave and the military was an option. And my oldest sister said to me, who's the oldest, she goes, if you don't leave, if you don't go, you are going to regret it for the rest of your life. There's nothing here for you. Mom's not going to help you. No one is going to help you. No one. So you need to go. You need to go into the Air Force and you need to do that and be done. Wow. Is it? Wow. Okay. Tracy, how about you? Um, I'm going to say the the matriarch, the current matriarch of my family, who is now 97 years old. Um, but she was one of the most practical people, right? But really it was because of her humanity, because she, she showed love to everybody in our community, whether you were blood family or not. If she could help you, she would help you. She made you feel like you were the only person in the world. And to everybody, she's actually my best friend's godmother too. And we talk about this all the time, but she just, her humanity is like, like no other. She just, she helped anybody that she could. So I'm going to say her, um, even to well, this actually, day. You didn't say. Her name is Beatrice McGill. Okay. Oh, what a cool by name. name. <laughs> by name, um, just because of just who she is and still even you know with all that she's going through right now just in her right mind is still expressing so much love for everybody in our community and in our family so it's her awesome. beautiful thank you and just a little side note jamie we're gonna need to use our inside voice today <laughs> i don't know what that means i'll I, sound like I'm marilyn kidding. monroe i'm kidding i'm kidding Okay, the youngest who probably, I don't know, Dano, has that even happened for you yet? Uh, <laughs> person? Yeah. No, I mean, do you have a person who's so uh, young? Yeah, come on. Now. If you guys already know who I am, you already know who I always give my credit to. Two people, my mother and my brother. I think everybody knows that by now. Um, you know, growing up in the city of Camden, the inner city, not, you know, life wasn't perfect. There was a lot of, you know, drugs that were around in the city and crime, but they were able to just, you know, say, yo, this is what you're going to end up with if you go down those wrong paths. So they always kept me, you know, straight focused on everything that I need to do. Uh, show me how to give love and just, you know, I got to give them, I just got to give them my credit. They did everything for me. They're my rocks. All right. There we go. So you all, are, let's see. Let's say hello. Let's say hello. Hi, Sherry Miss McQueen. Eric Scott, how are you? Good to see you. Sherry, thank you for posting the Eventbrite link. Listen, you guys, don't forget. We understand times are tough and wallets are tight, but we've made it easy, easier for you to join us on April 28th. You don't have to come to Chicago. You can now get your tickets uh, for the pay-per-view all day, seven hour event of the Power of We Symposium streaming live through the E360 network all over the globe. So we'll be live at the Stan Mansion. We want you there with us. You don't have to just be in spirit now. $27 gets you the full access pass for the full day. During the lunch hour, you'll even get to experience the things you won't see because some things are happening before nine o'clock curtain time that day. We mean, what I mean by that is you get to see footage from the night before when we all show up, all of the people who are pouring into what is now 287 kids um, at the Stan Mansion from the hardest hit areas of Chicago and beyond. Uh, you'll see what we do the night before, almost like our own personal version of Christmas Eve, where we gather, we fellowship, we pour into each other, we get on the same page so that the next day we can change as many young lives as possible. So um, let's go, let's go, man. <laughs> and then, and then there were two. So okay, and uh, right, Tracy, and then um, you'll also get to experience the red carpet ceremony. You see all of us who are partaking as the poorer inners, is that a word, uh, or a phrase? Okay, it is. Um, we'll be walking the red carpet while the buses are dropping all those kids off out front. They'll watch us. We'll go out the back, join them on the street, and then open the gates. We line that red carpet, and now we celebrate them as every one of them has their moment 
on the red carpet. We're there to celebrate, uplift, and start the healing process for those who have still been who have still been waiting. Um, um, we were all kids. We admitted that. We know that. So I want to start today by just giving you guys some peeks inside of some of the great things you'll be able to enjoy that day outside. And this, no way, we're just gonna I'm gonna spread it out over the next week and a half, just giving you a little piece. We'll start with um, a little peek at Wally Green, who I met through Dano. Dano had Wally on a show and then he was on my show. Um, Dano's been to New York and hung out with him. And so let's just take a look. Wally Green, he'll be um, sharing his current video that is, this is going to see just a little bit of it, a documentary um, airing on, I believe, what is it, Dano? Is it, what, is it, what channel is that thing on? What, the documentary? Yeah. You know, to be honest. I think it's the, um, what's the, National Geographic or something. Oh, like yeah, yeah, it is National Geographic. Yeah, it's on National yeah. Geographic. Right, we're going to show it in its entirety at the Power Week. And Wally and one of the top uh, players in the world, I believe it's from Japan, they will be doing an exhibition for the kids and for you. So let's just take a look real quick. I want to introduce you to uh, Wally Green and just give you a sneak peek of some of the great stuff coming up on April 28th. Here we go. <laughs> He's like, come on, I got something for you. Bring it, bring it. Nah, you see, you don't mess with those kind of cats. Those cats have fought a lot of wars in the street, man. And those cats don't play. Hi, my name is Wally Green. I'm a newly um, college graduate in graphic design and international professional table tennis player. Okay, it's kind of like this. There, there are not many table tennis like players like me. You know, first of all, I'm black. You know, I'm from a project. I live in the hood. But the, this sport is the fast, one of the fastest sports in the world. So what happens is when you first start playing, you can't get the ball on the table. Then when you start hitting the ball, some rallies, you know, boom, boom, boom. That's like, oh wow, I can do that. And then when the guy rips the ball and bring it back, it's like, oh wow, man, that's cool. And what happens is you become really addictive. Guys have lost their girlfriends. My friend lost his wife. And it's true. It's table tennis. Because what happens is, and I've done it, you say, I'm not playing table tennis for the whole week. You know, and you walk by and you're right, like, falling. Like, nah, I'm not playing. Why are we? Nah, nah, I'm not playing. And then what happens is I'm not playing table tennis. I tell your girlfriend, and nah, I'm not playing this week. I'm not playing this week. You start feeling the racket, and then you start doing this. Then you get a ball. You start bouncing on it. It's like, honey, I'm going to table tennis. <laughs> I want to be uh, a famous rapper in Japan, and I want to become the most popular table tennis player in the world. He's the man right here. He's the man. The man. Okay. Well, that's Wally. He is quite a character, and there's so much to this young man. So, so much. Uh, went to North Korea on a peacekeeping mission. You might remember that story from when he was here. And just all kinds of things. Has nine, I think, well, how many clubs are, how many table tennis clubs? And it's great. They're, they're all over the world. I, they're all like, over. Yeah, we're actually going to be at the Chicago um, location of Spin Chicago, Wally's um, Table Tennis Social Club. And uh, that's where we'll be the evening of April 28th for another uh, bookend. Uh, we start the night before, we end the next night with fellowship on both ends of those who pour in. We want to go back to where we were and take some of this goodness back to the nest, if you know what I mean. Can I get an amen? Oh, there, thank you. Now, before we talk anymore, we're going to go to Teresa Griffin. Now, Teresa's coming, she's making an appearance and we're so grateful that she's taking a time, taking the time out of her schedule. She's touring and doing all kinds of things. And um, Teresa is a great friend. She was on my show two years ago at um, Celebrity Week, and you might remember her. She's uh, been on The Voice. She's been a background singer for Diana Ross, Patti LaBelle, and mm. numerous recording projects throughout the industry. And she's there. Um, I help her with her kids' event, and she helps with mine, and she'll be there. And here's just a little taste of Teresa. Take a look. How can I say thank you, the queen of soul, Aretha Franklin? Wow, 
you help me find my soul. I no longer apologize for my looks and my eyes, my hips, my thighs, the riffs, and my voice. Thank you, Miss Franklin, my queen of soul. To make you laugh. Thank you. I would be a fool for you. Although the people turn to stay, I really don't care. So beautiful. I would give my everything to keep you born. It breaks my heart when you're not there. I'll stay at your belly. On the table tops, command performance. People will cry, cry. Say, yeah, girl. And although I don't have a tune, my show ain't gon' fly. I'll find the music they in your eyes. Oh. oh. That's how I see myself sometimes. <laughs> Me too, girl. <laughs> She's beautiful. Yes, inside and out. Okay, because I'll sit here again all day. <laughs> Thank you, Teresa Griffin. You'll see her in person should you join us. And we hope you will. April 28th, we walk the red carpet at 8 a.m. Yes, that's right. When the buses are coming, we're <laughs> walking the red carpet, all of us, and then the kids. So uh, more information, head over to powerofwesymposium.com. The room block is extended through Friday. We sold out the first block of rooms. Now they've added 10 more. So it's going to be a great time, and we want you to be there. Um, who else? Bernadette, how are you doing? Sherry McQueen. Uh, Brandy, the disconnector is in the house. Lori Whitney, top fan. How are you? Lori, you see your grandmother was an angel. I'm sure she was. Um, look what she helped get here. You. So, um, yeah. Yeah. That's Teresa. And I would be remiss if I didn't remind you guys of our, you know, the kids are our VIPs in every way possible. This year, we're even more blessed than usual because we have some kids who are headlining, not just the uh, wonderful Grammy award winning Chicago Soul Children's Choir headed up by Dr. Walt Whitman, their 40th year anniversary this year so we're just so honored to have them with us at the power we entertaining uplifting and pouring in and allowing us to pour into all of those young souls as well but we also have a young author i speak of um my oh, he's just he's like a little son to me i've been coaching him in person for over a year he's 12 years old and his his his, his claim to fame is he's written a book in the in the heat of being bullied uh, so much so the school said we just can't we can't too many kids are bullying him we can't change those kids so you might want to move him somewhere else he took all that pain at 12 years old wrapped it up in purpose and published a book that he sold on publishers row just a few months ago his name is sebastian reina he's 12 years old like i said and we're going to interview him there he's going to be one of our spotlight youth <laughs> so i can't wait to introduce you to him he's one of Girl, you need to um, you pour that tea out, whatever it is. That, I'm that, so excited! I love hearing about that. That is awesome. Thank you. Okay, I, I thought you were in some other place. No, this Thanks, is girl. amazing. Yeah, come on, Daniel. Can I get a let's go? Let's go, man. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Look at Sebastian, man. So here's what I wanted to tell you guys. Um, when you head over to Eventbrite or at the Power We Symposium site. You will see the ticket thing. Uh, click it up in the corner. Now you can get your virtual tickets. Get them now. Get your virtual tickets or your in-person tickets uh, for the Power Week, April 28, $27 all day, full access pass. So, um, so <clears throat> here's why the virtual tickets are even more important. We, the Power of Week, 
we are splitting we're dividing whatever monies we we bring in through all of the pay-per-view venue even the recordings afterwards we're splitting with the chicago soul children's choir because they are trying to raise a million dollars to uh help offset what's going on over in the ukraine so they have a song out and you can go there i highly recommend you do you'll see it um inside the video you'll see where you can go to donate a dollar is all they're asking but we will be splitting again all of the monies from our pay-per-view with them so let's take a listen just a little bit we've heard some of it before but i just want for those of you who might not have been exposed to it to just dip your toes uh inside this pool for a second here they are the chicago soul children's choir <laughs> all day so show children of chicago um great kids doing great things one of the little soloists you heard right there is um a, a young lady who was at our original power we in 2018 and she um did a pinky story you've heard this i'm sure if not you're going to uh and she said when you come back i'll be doing great things and uh she indeed is she's got the lead in chicago's uh staging of the lion king and she'll be um with the group that's coming to chicago soul children so we're so excited so 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 very excited um for all of the kids but it's just a wonderful time um i want to find out from tracy what what are you hoping to take home from your experience at the power we i know you're bringing your son jordan um what are you hoping will happen what are you expecting I don't know. Expect the unexpected, to be honest with you. I just really, the thing that I keep thinking about is just really seeing the kids and the expressions on their face and, you know, hopefully just seeing the breakthroughs and, you know, them just being awakened, you know, from the, from the experience. I have a question for you too. Are we allowed to hug? <laughs> oh, actually it's going to be encouraged. Okay, um, good. We're actually going to have a five minute um, fist pump, handshake, hug, okay. dance. Okay. I know. Yeah, we we're going to okay. get it in. Okay, good. Because I know with COVID, but I just, I'm not, I probably oh, won't be no. able to help myself. So oh, I'm yeah. just going to let you know now. <laughs> That's one of the beautiful things about the power. We all day long, and even in our promos, you'll notice, you'll see kids being pulled in for hugs. You'll see kids praying with people in the corner. We listen to them and we ask, what do you think you need today? And that's what we concentrate on, giving them everything they need that day. 
Um, because you know, that's how you get there moment by moment. The Doobie brothers said it best. So there it is. Um, I want to bring in another. There's so many things. We have celebrities who are wearing our official t-shirt. You can get that at the triple nickel.com site or go to power. We, uh, symposium, put symposium, and you'll be able to be redirected to get your official power. We shirt. let me show you. I have it. Um, I can show you kind of what it looks like here's the front of it boom and there's the back of it you can get those sherry i think you have the link for that too would you drop that in um that helps get those kids here it cost us right around 250 dollars per child and this year like i said we have 375 kids coming or so so and there'll probably be some others that call at the last minute um so and we never say no so pray for us we need it we're gonna get there though um so we have some like i said some celebrity shout outs they'll be wearing those but we also have um celebrities in the house you saw one with Teresa griffin here's another person who's a dear friend of mine and i'm so glad he's coming i'm speaking of the donovan vernon that's right his name has the in it the donovan vernon um if you were a fan of the hulu show Queens with Brandy, Eve, and a host of other uh, celebrities in it, then you are familiar with the Donovan. We're so, so blessed and grateful to, that he's coming. And spe especially since he agreed to come, he was hired to do the music for Brandy's Hallmark um, movie. So he's there now uh, working on that, but he's going to leave and come to the event and then go back to the shoot. So we're just grateful to have him. So I want to give you a little introduction. Uh, to the Donovan Vernon, uh, who will be, he's a concert pianist, classically trained pianist, and he gives away through his music programs, free uh, music piano lessons to disadvantaged youth and elders. I just love him to death and he raises tons of toys. Over a hundred thousand toys were given away this past Christmas through his nonprofit, the Donovan's Venom. So um, I would be remiss if I didn't I'd give you a peek into my good friend Donovan Vernon. And I just want to tell y'all, this lady right here, this goddess, a gift from God, changed my life, such an inspiration, and I can't wait for you guys to see just like all of her, as you have for many years, but in a special and new way. She changed my life forever, and I can't wait for you guys. I love you. Thank you. I love y'all. Okay, that was that. And one other little thing so that you can, I believe it's also important to show how people uh, give because everyone that comes to the par we brings whatever they have. It is, in fact, you've heard me refer to the power we many times as a modern day stone soup story. If you're not familiar, I suggest you Google it. It's a wonderful story where everyone in town brought whatever they had and they put it in the community pot and everybody was able to feast. That is the power of we, for real. So here's a little something about how Donovan gives back to Hi Christ. guys, what's going on? Welcome to the Donovan's Piano Room. Yay, okay, listen. I know you're like, well, who is this crazy guy? What's happening here? I'm so excited, I just got it my very first shipment of books, The Donovan's Piano Room. Who am I? I am The Donovan. I'm a classically trained pianist, but that's not important. I'm college educated, that's also not important. The most important thing is that I'm gonna teach you everything I know about music and art, the science behind it, so that you don't do what I do, but what you want to do. Whether you're a songwriter, an instrumentalist, a vocalist, I can give you the skills that you need to go to the next level. I'm also running a special. Yay. Okay. So these books are available every. So what's he doing with us? He's offering all the kids that are there um, free piano lessons through his program. Um, as well as any elders that they have in their families. So he's just awesome. He's bringing a 6K camera. So we will get cinematic um, footage um, on on at every turn. It's just great. I just love him. So it's connected to him that I cannot talk about and many more things. So we're going to get back to our, our uh, panel of experts, if you will. And 
Um, Tim Chung, you are in charge of the height squad. Tell us what that's going to look like. How's it going? And who are you bringing? Who are these people? What's your job? What's your role at the Power of We? What can we expect? Ooh, of course. What what is like specifically going to look like? It's going to be a surprise, of course. Okay. But what you kind of get an idea of it is that we're going to bring in a bunch of energy and we're going to keep popping in here and there, um, just hyping up the kids, hyping up the audience. And we're going to be screaming, yelling, jumping around, and we're going to be handing out prizes. It's going to be so much fun. Like, we love prizes. Every little moment with the hype squad. It's going to be great. Yeah. How many people is it going to be? Do you know yet? No, not not selling a number yet, but we have um, a total of five so far. Perfect. So uh, that, that's generally around where we're going to try to keep. I am looking okay. for a couple more, though. All right. Tim Chung in charge of the hype squad. Tracy, I know you got to shoot out of here early because you got a show. So as co MC with Dano on the main stage, that's an all, you know, MCs get more time on stage than the speakers when you add it all up. Um, how you feeling about it? Are you excited? I am. I am excited. And listen, Dano's a ball of energy anyway. So <laughs> I think we're going to feed off of each other, but I am, I am super excited. Okay. And Jamie, <laughs> Jamie's going to be cheering from home. She did buy a ticket and donate it so that someone, and we did gift someone who wouldn't have been able to come. They could only afford the airfare. They didn't have the hotel. They didn't have the ticket and we made it work. They're bunking with somebody and we gave them your ticket, Jamie. So you made that happen. Um, so look for a shout out from the stage that day. And I just want to uh, thank you, Tracy, for popping in. I want to thank, thank you. all of you for popping in. Um, but I know Tracy has to go. Anything you want to say before you head out? Now, everybody get on the Power We Symposium. Donate, buy tickets, join us um, virtually. Just be involved. Get involved. That's all I want to say. You're right. Thank you, Tracy. We'll see you next month. Catch Tracy's show, The Whole Living Show. Tracy, what day and time is that? It is every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern at Standard Time. Which is today. And then you have another show on? On Tuesday evenings at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that one is called? Fem Talk, everybody. Talk, F -E -M. <laughs> talk, 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 talk. Thanks, Tracy Randolph. We'll see you next time. Have a Thank great you. week. God bless you. Bye, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. You're welcome. So, you guys, just four of us here. <laughs> um, so, let's talk red carpet. Jamie, you can, they're going to describe. Now, I've seen what Dano's got. One of the things. Um, I, I get five, five out of five stars out of five. But to, yeah, oh, I, yeah. Like, I think you're gonna look great in it. Um, I know you got a couple wardrobe changes. Your mom spilled a beat. <laughs> what your other outfit looked like, and I can't wait to see that. Brian and I are ready. Brian and I are ready. Uh, we we started getting ready for this months ago. Except you know we can only drink water and eat crackers for the next two weeks. So we weren't doing that part yet. So, but we got the clothes. We just got to fit in them. That's what we got to do. Tim, what does your red carpet look, uh, look, wait, what does your red carpet look, look like? Oh, you don't have to tell us. Do you have one? Uh, I have an idea. Yeah. Um, think so. I, I love my uh, tailored suits. Mm. So definitely I'm going to, be coming in, styling. Styling and profiling? Yeah. I already know. You guys don't know, but Tim is buffed. When Brian and I met Tim in Chicago for lunch that day, we were looking. I was like, Brian, look. Look at that good-looking Asian guy. Kind of looked like Tim, but he's way too buffed and taller. Right? Because I remember I'd never. Right. I, mean, right. You can't, I didn't realize you were so fit. I mean, you uh, know Dan thinks he's the king of fitness, so. Who me? No. Well, mm -hmm. we'll see. We'll see at the power of week. I think look at Jamie. Jamie like she ready to bust open. So <laughs> hey, let me ask you, Tim. The hype squad's gonna walk, some of them are gonna walk the red carpet too, right? And then you guys are gonna get into your outfits. Right. I'm excited. I'm excited. A lot of wardrobe changes going on. Thank God there's an apartment there that they let you use for all of that. We're really excited. Now, let me ask you something about when not all of us have been to events when we were kids. Does any event. <laughs> Hi, guys. We all see it. We all see it. I, I did not. On the commercial. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, it's America. So listen, let me ask you guys, do you what kind of event what stands out in your mind from when you were a kid? Was it an assembly at school? You know, like everybody had the one where they bring in the hypnotist and so, and all the kids go up there and end up jumping around like chickens and stuff. That stands out to me. But also, like, was it a Cub Scout thing? Was it a church thing? But what did you love about, here's the question. What did you love the most about events when you were a kid? What made you go, now that was fun. What was it? Jamie, what was the main thing for you? Um, I liked watching the, uh, we had a dance squad in school, like in high school, you know, the assemblies and, um, well, I like dancing. It was just really cool the way they did that, the choreography. And then some of them could do like backflips and with acrobats and, um, they were talented. It was really awesome at the pep rallies and shit. But would it be safe to say that the energy level? Yeah. Okay. So we got some of that going. Tim, what about you? Yeah, thinking back in the day, it was probably when which was like three uh, years ago. I know that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> But okay, when I when I when I was a kid, when I was a kid, uh, they would bring in a motivational speaker, and I what really stood out to me was when they would talk about like real stuff that wasn't just like adding numbers and like sitting in a chair all day long. They would share real experiences, real pain trauma healing the things that really matter the most and i remember just sitting there like tearing up and like why, why am i crying and i'm like making sure no one looks at me and i'm like wow people are living out there people are doing work out there um that's um i, I guess i don't think about it too often but i'm like that's what life's about thanks for sharing that man that makes me uh, truly makes me feel good because you know, before COVID, that was primarily where I was able to to get my work. And you always wonder, you know, a, a bunch of kids will come up after you, but you always wonder, what about those ones I bored to tears? You know, what are they going to do? But uh, that's occurring. Yeah. Did that have any effect on the work you do today? Did that uh, help you make the decision to work with young people like you do and just people? Yeah. Yeah, um, definitely. Because uh, there's a lot of as, as a kid, there's always um, things that adults will say where, you know, it's just they're just saying it. They don't even follow these rules. They're making up to me. Right themselves. Now. Right. Exactly. But then there are those like truth moments where they're just laying it out out there. They're being real with you for once. And uh, I think that really impacted me where I want to uh, have a like a like a truth, authentic like experience for the people I reach and never like steer them wrong. Can I ask you something? Because, yeah. you know, Dano knows that he has like an added responsibility because he is, um, you know, all of the brown kids in the audience will be looking at him. And you, you're a person of color too, Tim. You're Asian. You know, you and I recently had the, the conversation about Asian hate and things like that. And I was like joking. I was like, well, you got the Japanese ping pong guy there. So be two of y'all at least, you know. So, but, but tell me how it feels to you to be, you know, um, a person of color, a, 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 an example of diversity and inclusion, um, to be able to share that piece with kids who don't look like you. You know what I'm saying? How, you know what I mean? Does that go through your mind? Have you thought about that at all? And how does it make you feel? Yeah, I, I've thought of it a lot, especially because um, just thinking back to 2020 and 21 uh, with the, the China virus and not even being Chinese, I'm Korean. Uh, right. I've had rocks thrown at me. I've had a gun pulled on me. Did, Lauren, you've heard this story. Did it, how I do you? They threw um, rocks. I knew about the gun. I didn't know they threw rocks. Yeah, yeah. And then um, there are these moments where I just like just needed to leave places for my safety and also uh uh, it's scenarios where there's just was no it the police standing. who did no, that to you, or not the police, just I was just curious, just citizens. Yeah, yeah, and um, it's just like you can't even reason with the other person at the time because I'm mm -hmm. a big, like I like influence and impact. So I'm like, I'd be there sitting down with them, like working with them, seeing like what's gonna act this way. But there's no time when you're like threatened and being um, thrown right when rocks are being thrown at you. But wait. Yeah. So I was I thinking the connection with the kids. Ow. 
Yeah, no, no, <laughs> right. I'm help, all right, I'm gonna help that ass. So you hit me with a lot. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, but, but I was thinking I as minorities, uh, <laughs> the, I'm sorry, the kids. No, no, I was thinking as the minorities, the, the kids, they understand to a certain level of feeling different, wishing they were just regular or wishing there was something else so they didn't have to go through those different scenarios. And right. like, yeah, even being Asian, being a little bit different, um, every Asian person I've like met have told me at least multiple times in their life, they've, they've just like wished to death they were just a different race just growing wow. up in america and i i i've talked to people of other color just sharing the same experience just like they've always had that fantasy where what if i was a six foot I'm tall like white now. dude or something yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. great well i look forward to you pouring in and yeah. um i'm gonna encourage the kids to ask all of us as many questions as they choose dan oh as of uh as uh you know like i said a lot of brown kids in the audience so um wait we got four minutes so give me a give me a recap of a one minute recap of not even a recap just tell us how it makes you feel to be able to be that example for kids in the latin community yeah well i can tell you this is that everybody that you know even adults nowadays everybody's programmed to think a certain thing so you know i'm going to use tim's example where you have kids that they say, man, I wish I grew up in a different town or I wish I was a different race. That's the way that we're programmed to think. So by me representing our culture and, you know, the minority race, if you don't have to wish that you're anything else. You can be exactly who you are and that's mm -hmm. enough for the world. You know, you don't just because you eat rice and beans or just because you have a certain skin color, that doesn't mean you don't belong anywhere. You belong in every room on this planet if you firmly believe that within yourself. So That's right. you know, just to have that confidence instilled in these children uh, from a very young age to fight all of that negative programming that they have, uh, that, that's really what I'm looking forward to. Because I remember, you know, in certain situations, I, I did feel out of place. So just to show them, hey, listen, you belong everywhere and you can be anywhere you want to be. Uh, that's really the goal that I, I'm trying to help instill in them. Awesome. Well, we're all in agreement. Because that's the power of we. We get to do things together. Um, the April 28th event, the Power We Symposium, is just one day. It is just one opportunity. But there are 364 other days and millions and millions and millions of other opportunities. What I'm getting at here is I don't care where you get it. Just find it. Find something that you can do and you can be an authority on. We want you to be transparent. We want it to be your truths, but get it out there. Change a life, change someone's mindset, set someone on the path of understanding, empowerment, but most importantly, healing. That is what we do with the Power of We, and we want you to join us. Get over to powerwesymposium.com. Check us out. Listen, I want to challenge all of the experts on the screen. I want all of us, and well, you guys too. Can we try to each get five people to purchase pay-per-view tickets this week. They're $27. We're splitting that money with the kids from the choir to help the Ukraine effort. And the rest will start the seed money for next year's Power Voice Symposium, which will be somewhere in the world, somewhere. God, it's good. I want to thank each and every one of you for seriously taking time out of your day at the front end and coming here to pour into us and to celebrate everything the power of we. Listen, get out there today and be the difference you'd like to see in the world. I will be here tomorrow morning, God willing, and I don't have a clue as to who the guest is going to be, but it'll be something great. You know it will be because the promise tells us it will be because when two or more of us comes together and we have the same heart set, mindset, and soul set of service, wonderful things happen. I'll see you tomorrow out front for the next episode of Bathroom Moments. Have a blessed day. Bye, experts. Thank you so much. God bless you.